Hi, and welcome to Dramatic Knits. My name is Steve, also known as Dramatic Knits, and today is Wednesday, April 15th, 2020. This is episode 353. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back one more episode. And if you're new, I hope you enjoy this episode and you'll come back in the future. As always, you can find our show notes on our website, DramaticKnits.com, and you can find the show there as well, as well as on YouTube and our Ravelry group, which is Dramatic Knits Video Podcast Group. So, how have you all been? I hope you have been staying well and sane. It is, what, we're on week, like, six of this stay shelter in place madness here in Illinois, and, um, you know, we have another two weeks to go. Um... But that means more crafting time, but it also means I'm taking a lot of naps because we're not dying as much since we don't have festivals to go to. And then so we're working like half days and then I'm bored sitting around crafting for, you know, so many hours. So I usually come home and set my alarm for like an hour and then it turns into like two hours. But funnily enough, I'm still not like losing sleep over it that much, so adjusting to the new normal, right? Anyway, so not much to talk about in the past two weeks because we haven't gone anywhere. We haven't done anything. We've been working. Um, Easter was last weekend. Um, we really didn't go anywhere. We, My mom invited us over for breakfast and um, we went over for like a half hour and kept our social distance. And it was more um, to kind of give her some social interaction um, without, you know, without her going out and going shopping and stuff because we've been doing most of the shopping for her. Um, for those of you who were worried about her last episode, um, I can't remember if we took her or not. Um, oh, last time I did record, we did, I did drive her to the ER for her cellulitis. Um, they pretty much looked at it and they did not want to keep her in the hospital if she didn't want to, which she was very nervous about entering the hospital at the age of 61. And having been a longtime smoker, she is now a vapor, so at least that's better. But um, she was, had a lot of, you know, lung issues. And so um, I dropped her off and um, they did some scans, some blood work, and they put her on really strong antibiotic. This was the second antibiotic they put her on. And then they released her that afternoon. Um, luckily, my sister went and picked her up after work. Um, she has been battling with it ever since. Um, they put her on a third antibiotic. She has not gone back to the hospital, but she's seen her doctor a couple of times. So um, they've now taken her off the antibiotic. She's now on a water pill because they say her foot is still very inflamed and she's still in a good deal of pain, but they think the cellulitis is gone at this point. So I don't know. I don't know much about uh, cellulitis, um, but from what I've read, it can be definitely be a hassle. So um, she's dealing, she's trying to keep the best spirits that she can, which in this day and age is, is hard to do. So I'm proud of her for, you know, keeping her head up and uh, staying as positive as she can about it. So anyway, um, yeah, and then, like I said, just been working and napping and crafting and um, <clears throat> today's my day off. I slept in to like 9.15, which is unheard of. Again, a lot of sleep happening over here. Um, and then I showered and had breakfast and wrote my show notes and here I am with you. So I'm going to get this all recorded, uploaded and show notes done. And then I probably will go into the studio for an hour or two just to package and ship out some club shipments. So, but I'll talk about that in just a little later on in the episode. <clears throat> Excuse me. Need to have my cup of coffee a day. All right, where shall we begin? What has taken a bow? What have I finished since we spoke last? <clears throat> they are not blocked, but I did just run upstairs and get sock blockers so you can see them on blockers, even though they're a little big for them. Um, I did finish my Stormy socks. These are out of Knitterly Things Vesper Sock Yarn in the Stormy colorway from years ago, so it's her old base. And then the cuff, heel, and toe is Leading Men Fiber Arch Showstopper Mini Skein in the Heirloom colorway. And here they are. <clears throat> 
So Andy loves them. Um, I finished them over like a week ago and I said, well, you can't wear them till I podcast. And he's like, that's fine. Um, surprisingly enough, by just picking up, I finished the first sock. I want to say this is the first one. This might be the first one. I don't know. I finished the first sock and then I just kept going. And oddly enough, they are only off by like a row. So they do a pretty darn good job of matching. But these are done. They will be um, given to Andy for him to wear. And these were knit on a size 1 US 2.25 millimeter needle. And so those are finished. And that's all that I've finished. But I do have something close, but you'll see what it is in a minute. All right, moving right along. What have I been working on? What's performing? And you'll see me kind of leaning. I need my computer show notes over here, so. Um, first off, I, I have made some progress on my So Basic sweater. This is by Maxim Sear. I'm using Leading Men Fiber Arts Soliloquy, which is our 100% superwash blue face lyster uh, base. And it's 150 grams, so you get 657 yards of fingering weight in it. I'm using a relatively new color called Don't Fear the Reaper. It is like a dark slate gray. There you go, that's true to color. And I am alternating skeins using helical knitting, which is really not that hard. I heard everyone talking about it. I'm like, whatever, I can just carry it. And I was like, you know what? I'll try the helical knitting. I can see it a little bit if I'm really looking for where it transitions, but other than that, it's not that bad. And I'm sure it will block out. But the good news is I have split for the sleeves. So it is a little brighter there due to the color balancing on my phone, as you can tell by my face. This is truer to color. Um, but I've split for the sleeves, and if you can see here, the only detail to this sweater is some ribbing in the sleeves. But other than that, now I'm just knitting, 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 knitting until I am happy with the um, length. And for me, I like my sweaters to go to 18 inches past the underarm. That suits me well. That covers up my belt line and goes to about my um, pockets in the back. And so um, you knit to two inches shorter than what you want because you're gonna do two inches of ribbing. And so I will just knitting till 16 inches and then I get to switch to ribbing at the bottom and then do the sleeves. So it is a very basic sweater. It is very easy for beginners as long as you can um, adjust the ribbing pattern into increasing in the sleeves, which honestly you don't really need to do the um, ribbing pattern. I'm doing it because it's a shop sample. If I were to knit this again, which would be a great fingering weight top down raglan for anybody. Um, I probably wouldn't do the ribbing in the sleeves. And that's knit on a size three and four US, which is a 3.25 and a 3.5 millimeter needle. All right, <clears throat> and I'm back. Next up for me is My Far Away Dreams by Hohi Locatelli. I am using Leading Men Fiber Arts again. Um, in our monologue base, which is 100%, or not 100%, it's 100% single ply, but it is 65% superwash merino, 20% silk, and 15% yak. I think. I might have the yak and the silk mixed up, but I don't think I do. So the main body of the shawl is going to be in our tranquil colorway. And then you pick up all around and you do an edging. And I'm going to use stretch your stuff. And so there's not much to see here. It's a lot of just basic stockinette knitting <clears throat> or just knit stitches, hence why you'll see I started something new. My needles are going through this. All right, so here we are so far. All this is, the main body of the shawl is garter stitch. So I am <clears throat> just shy of 300 uh, rows here and I need to go to like 462 or something like that or 468, so. It's just knit, 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 knit. So really good TV knitting, but. 
And that's being knit on a size 6 US um, 4 millimeter needle. Excuse me, all of a sudden my nose is dripping. Super attractive, right? I know. That's me in a nutshell, super attractive. Hashtag not. Um, all right, so uh, next up is my Vera socks. Show. So I showed you these last episode as uh, what I was gonna cast on. But I'm trying to work through my self-striping yarn stash from oldest to newest so that, you know, they're not just perpetually sitting on these shelves. And so this is the Loopy U's self-striping series, which I don't believe ever actually went into production. Uh, we got this at the Spring Fling in like 2011, 12. It was the last one that was in St. Louis. And I am knitting these for Andy's mom. This is the Vera colorway. And then the cuff, heel, and toe is going to be Leading Men Fiber Arts Showstopper in the Vengeance colorway. It's not the same color as the dark stripe uh, by any means, but I thought it complemented it well. His mom loves purple, so I thought these would do. Um, I did do 80 rounds down the leg, including a 10 round cuff. I think I went to 10. It's usually what I do. And then I put in the afterthought heel and I'm gonna go to potentially about 60 rounds down the foot before I put in the toe and heel. I have her shoe size in my phone. I need to figure out how many inches that is and then blah, 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 blah. So those are going, again, that's knit on a size uh, one US 2.25 millimeter needle. Next up, I have a new project. So on Sunday, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of just knitting with no patterning or anything. I mean, we all like our mindless knitting, but all of my projects are mindless. And uh, I have been working on my crochet blanket. And on Saturday night, I was falling asleep thinking about how could I crochet a shawl? Da, 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 da. I'm sure it's out there, but if I just did this and this and this. So on Sunday, I was like, you know what? I have a bunch of Lion Brand Mandala, Mandala that I bought on clearance when our Walmart went out of business uh, here in town. And I was gonna weave with it. Well, it turns out I don't like weaving with a worsted DK weight. So uh, I have quite a few balls, like six balls upstairs and that aren't even on the staff shelf. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna break uh, one of those out and I'm gonna figure out how to do a really simple crocheted triangle shawl. So I found a YouTube video and there is a pattern on Ravelry. It's called My First Triangle Shawl and it's by Lindsay Dale and all it is is double crochet. Chaining four and double crocheting and chaining three and it's just the same row over and over again. And so I had two balls of this Lion Brand Mandala in the Sphinx colorway and I thought I might make a really big shawl but then based on the size I'm getting right now, this is all I have left. This is a two... 150 gram ball, you get um, 590 yards in here, and it's a long color changing yarn. And I'm um, using a size G, or I'm sorry, an H hook, which is an eight. And I'm using my um, interchangeable crochet set from Wild Stitchers. And what I love about them is it comes in a case and it goes all the way, uh, this is the largest hook they have in it, but you get like six or seven hooks and they just come out like this and then you pick your handle and these are all done um, hand done with resin by uh, Jen and Orlean's dad they are the wild stitchers and their dad is the one who does all the woodworking and all the working really um, I think the husbands are starting to help um, but they are kind of the um, the sales team and, and the product development so I fell in love with this handle. I got this at Stitches Midwest, I think, last year or the year before. But anyway, it just goes in. It's got really good, you know, you gotta actually pull on it to get it out. And it's been hooking real good for me. So anyway, here's my shawl so far. I would probably have this done in the next night or two. I just started this on Sunday. It's amazing how much I forgot how quickly crochet goes. But here it is. And yeah. So I have quite a few balls of these and I think I'm just gonna hook them up 
and I may put them on um, the website for super cheap since I got the yarn super cheap. It didn't take the long to hook up. And I think they would just make really good under the jacket shawls. I mean, and it's lightweight enough and the acrylic's really soft. So we'll see how much it blocks out, but I like it. <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're going on this one. And uh, yeah, so. That's been fun to, um, for those of you who don't know, my, my fiber journey actually started with crochet. Um, I was eight years old when one summer there was a very, um, when I say very, she was elderly. She was in her uh, very high 80s at the time. And um, <clears throat> I would go in and check on her um, a couple times a week and we would sit down and she taught me how to crochet. And I mastered the popcorn stitch that summer and I made a blanket for my sister. Um, well, it was eight when I learned, and then I made a blanket, and I finished it for my sister. Um, I must have finished it when, uh, my sister was born when I was ten, so. Um, anyway. There you go. So that's been fun. I've been working on that when I'm watching, uh, Supernatural. Because I don't actually have to watch it to follow along. And then last but not least, I have my Granny Square blanket to show you. Last night I finished row 16 of 20. So I will <clears throat> show you that top row. Right here we have Darkest Hour by us. This is Murda by Bumblebee Baker, Bumblebee Bakers? Bumblebee Bakers. Now you gotta bake me some food, Sam. Sam, Carissa. Um, this is the Murda colorway that I used for the <clears throat> gathering shawl in their coquette sock. This was not labeled, I don't think. This was a single ply. Or maybe this is this or that craft studio or something. This is some sandcastle, I want to say. <laughs> Rusted. Don't know. This is the Stormy Sock, self-striping. Don't know. Black Walnut, by us. This was a little bit thicker. I don't know who this was. This wasn't labeled, it was a small little mini. Don't know, but pretty. Sandcastle again, which landed on top of Sandcastle, but that's random. And then this is the Old Forest colorway, again by Bumblebee Baker's Farm. This one I feel like is black cap, but I don't know. And then last but not least, I added on Primordial last night. So now I have to chain all the way across and start the 17th row. And wow, that really felt that holding that up. <clears throat> Just a weakling anymore. All right, so that's going. Let's move on in rehearsal. I don't have anything really planned other than maybe another hooking another triangle shawl. Um, so let's move into behind the scenes. Um, I wanna say I'm gonna edit it in, but I'm not. Um, I did finish my spinning of Bumblebee Acres Farm Cormo. Um, I used some undyed of their fiber in what I was calling chocolate, and then some hand uh, rolled roll legs um, that they had called a Midsummer Night's Dream. So I called it a Midsummer Night's Dream of Chocolate. I did, they were two ounces of each. I spun them and plied them together and boy, it came out beautiful. But I put it in the shop when it was washed and ready and it went within the day. And um, I would say I was gonna edit the photo in, but I'm really not. So if you go to Dramatic Knits on Ravelry and look up my hand spun page, it's the top or the first latest entry. You can see pictures of it there, but I got, um, I want to say 300 and 14 or 312 yards of like a sport weight. Can't remember. It's been a little bit. So much so that I started spinning my next 
hand spun, and that is some Apothecary Fabrications Fine Merino Wool in what I'm calling the Andy's Pick colorway. He picked this up when we first met Faye and her family. Um, they are based out of Arkansas, and um, we've now, we do shows all over with them, um, <clears throat> but they go by Apothecary Fabrications. And I've spun the first two ounces um, it did not have a colorway name, but Andy picked it up in 2017, as I said. Um, you can't see much of it. But um, there's some peaches in there. It's got blues and like a sea foamy green. Um, and I spun that straight from the braid. And then I am working on spinning the rest of this. You can see the pretties there. Uh, it's got some gray, too. So this is um, one-third of the second two ounces, and I have two thirds left to spin. So um, I've got one third on the wheel and two thirds left to go and then I can ply. So, and I'm not really caring how thin I'm getting it. Um, it's probably gonna end up my normal sport to DK weight. <clears throat> All right, let's move into uh, in the scene shop. So what else have I been crafting? I've been working on my um, <clears throat> Heaven and Earth Designs cross stitch called One for Sorrow, and I'm doing this uh, two over one tent stitch or half stitch, and I'm almost done with page two. So you can see page two here, but it is a bird, a raven or a blackbird of some sort on like a big pedestal of um, really eerie granite or something. Um, but it's going. So slowly but surely. But it's been nice to see some progress being had on that because I'm home a little bit more and I don't travel with my cross stitch, so. All right, let's talk about In the Spotlight. What are we watching and reading? I haven't finished reading anything. But I will tell you about things we watched and finished. Um, we did watch uh, The Kitchen, which stars oh, um, Melissa McCarthy, Tiffany Haddish and Elizabeth Moss. Um, and basically their husbands are arrested in Hell's Kitchen. Um, their husbands are part of the Irish mob and while their husbands are in jail, they decide to kind of revamp their system of keeping their city safe for a fee and they potentially become the new boss uh, of the mob. So I actually thought it was pretty good. It's set in the 70s. It's pretty good. Um, then I forced Andy to watch La Lorena or La Rona. Um, this is a scary movie um, based on a, I believe it's Mexican uh, folklore. Um, basically the woman in white um, who kills her kids and then goes in searching, um, kills herself, but her ghost goes in searching of other children to make her own. Um, it was all right. I don't think it was as bad as I thought it was going to be based on the five point something IMDb rating. Um, but it, it was okay. Um, and then we finished True Detective season three. Um, I do not recommend it. It was very long. It took us a while to get back into it. Um, the last episode in particular seemed very drawn out. Could have ended like five times before it did. And just left you with more questions than anything. Um, I felt like they were definitely trying too hard with um, the ending especially, so. All right, stash enhancement, as I promised you last episode, I don't have any. I've shown you everything I've stashed and I don't have anything new to show you, so. All right, this episode's giveaway is going to be for our a book called Last Minute Knitted Gifts. It is a nice hardcover book. It's put out by uh, Joelle Hoverson. And so something good to have on your um, bookshelf for, you know, when you need something kind of quick or you just want an idea of things that you can do um, and gift. And I was trying to see what year this came out. 2004. 
So you're running about 16 years, but still think it's got a lot of nice things in here that are not too, <clears throat> too difficult or too, um, time bound, like, you know, set. They would still be relevant today is what I'm trying to get to. So in order to be eligible to win this book, um, you need to be a member of the Dramatic Knits video podcast group on Ravelry. And there's a thread that will be up when this episode is up for this. And you need to answer the prompt within that thread. Only one post per person, please. That is your entry. And um, you need to answer the prompt. This episode's prompt is, what is the most useful app on your phone or tablet or device? And if you really don't use apps, you know, what is an app? Uh, an application that you can, um, that you would like to use on your phone or might make life a little bit, excuse me, easier. So that's our giveaway. This was generously donated by our fairy yarn mother. All right, last episode, let's move into a round of applause. We were giving away three skeins of Knit Pick Simply Alpaca. And the prompt last episode was, what movies have you rewatched the most number of times? Since, you know, a lot of us are stuck inside and watching a lot of television and TV shows and movies, we are no exception. Um, <clears throat> the winner of that was number 22, um, Head Stitch in Charge, and that is Tessa from Michigan. So congratulations, Tessa. She said, probably Silence of the Lambs. I started watching it when I was way too young, like four years old, dancing like Buffalo Bill because it was my dad's favorite. So it seems like dads get us in trouble for the bad movies. Um, yours was a little bit more risque <laughs> than mine, but um, I don't actually have a relationship with my dad anymore. But when I was very young, um, I actually had... My mom and dad were divorced, but um, I did, you know, spend alternate weekends with him when I was very young. Um, and when I was five, I remember he let me watch Beetlejuice and my mom freaked out. So, Silence of the Lambs at four. I guess it's really more suspenseful. It's not gory, so. I guess it's okay. Because I need to give you the seal of approval on your childhood movie watching. Anyway, congratulations, Tessa. If you would, please private message me on Ravelry with your first and last name, mailing address, and an email address. I will get that out in the mail to you as soon as I can. Do you want to remind you to enter everything you finish this month in the month of April into our Race to the Finished Object contest? Each thing that you finished, you can post as a separate entry. And um, at the end of the month, we will draw for two winners. One will be for a physical prize from our prize pool that has been generously donated. And the second will be a pattern from our featured designer, who is Shana Cohen. Um, Shana has been with us um, now from February, and she'll be with us through, I believe, July. So, Speaking of Shana, we do have the Shana Lines Designs Knit Along going on in the Dramatic Knits video podcast group. It runs from February 1st through July 31st. You can knit any and as many of Shana's patterns as you would like. Each of Shana's, um, each thing that you finished will get you an entry in the drawing each month. We will draw for our winner. And at the end of the knit along, we will draw for a bigger prize. Um, and Shana has given us a coupon code for you to get 20% off any of her patterns until the end of the knit along. And that coupon code is dramatic, all lowercase. And that goes through July 31st as well. All right, let's move center stage into all things leading men fiber arts. Let's quickly talk about our cast of characters mini skein club. You all have blown us away with your support of this. Um, we have had quite a few people sign up for this and um, we can take many more as well. So um, what we're doing is we're starting in alphanumerical order of all of our colorways. We have over 200 colors as of right now. And um, each month you will get five more in the set. So we started with 911 Butterfly this episode, this month. We got 911 Butterfly, um, <clears throat> Ate My First Rodeo, Acid Trip, 
a pigeon called Martha, an alien attack. Those were the five that are shipping out this month. And so if you want to start at the very beginning with us, um, you know, we highly recommend that you sign up in the next two days. We do cut off on the 17th of the month for invoicing and putting in orders for that month. Um, all orders will ship out by the 24th. If you sign up after the 17th of a month, you will be invoiced starting the next month. Um, invoices go out on the 10th, they must be paid by the 17th, and then they go out by the 24th. Um, we've started shipping a few yesterday, so as they're ready and people have paid, um, we're shipping them out. And um, we are so thankful to all of you that are joining along with us, that are having a cast party with five of our cast of characters each month, and um, I can't wait to see what you all do with all these minis. So, um, <clears throat> Next month, we'll be still in the A's, um, but you'll get five more starting in May. So, And you can join and um, cancel at any time. You can even email us and put it on hold for a number of months if you want to do. Um, it's completely up to you. We're very fluid in all of that. We have a multitude of knit-alongs going on in the Leading Men Fiber Arts Group. The first of <clears throat> is our Pearl Code Cardigan Knit-Along, and we extended the deadline on that to go to May 31st, um, so you can get a little more time. We have quite a few people that joined in on that knit-along a little bit later, so I wanted to give a little bit more time to that. Speaking of which, I believe next episode I will bring our sample that just came in this week. We had someone knit up for us. <clears throat> the Bee Anything Shawl by Michelle Steed. That is a three skein worsted weight shawl. Um, and that ends at the end of this month. We have the Coincide Cowl, which is by Shayna. And that is a one skein of intermission. It's a $12 skein of yarn. And that'll get you a cowl. I showed that last episode. So if you knit the Coincide Cowl, you can put it in the Coincide Cowl Knit Along in the Leading Men Fiber Arts Group. You could put it in the Shana Lines Designs Knit Along in the Dramatic Knits Group, and you could put it in the Race to the Finished Object. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. Last but not least, we have the Easiest Cabled Hat Ever. This is by Corey Eichelberger, and it uses one skein of our West End base. And in fact, depending on the size that you choose, you could get two hats out of the skein. I showed that off our sample last episode, and that ends at the end of April too. So we have three knit-alongs ending at the end of April, but don't worry, there'll be new knit-alongs starting in May, so keep an eye out. Our best place to look besides the Leading Men Fiber Arts Ravelry Group is to sign up for our newsletter. Um, <clears throat> as I put those uh, out there every week, what knit-alongs we're doing. All right, I wanted to show you a new sample. We just got this one in last week, and this is called Just Float, and it is by Stephanie Lotvin, Telly B Knits. And it is a top-down yoke construction done with color work, and it is fingering weight. We knit this up in our Broadway base, which is our non-superwash fingering weight. It is 100% merino. We used our cherry pie colorway for the contrasting color and our smoke on the water. This is our new gray. This is our light gray. Don't fear the reaper. What I'm knitting mine on is our new dark gray. This is our light gray. So smoke on the water and cherry pie. <clears throat> this particular sample is the size medium, which is a 43 inch bust. And this uh, used three skeins for the main body and one skein for the color work. <clears throat> Can you tell how much talking I do these days? And the yardage, depending on your size, can range anywhere from 755 yards to 2,690. So 2,690. There's a wide range of sizes in this pattern. We do carry the pattern in our online store, and right now we are offering free domestic shipping on all orders over $10. So if you wanted to pick up the yarn for this, as well as the pattern, pattern costs the same as it does on Ravelry, and it comes with a digital download code as well. So with the free shipping, you might as well throw in the pattern if you're interested. And I just, I really liked this color work at the top. I thought it was very nice, and our sample knitter did an amazing job, so. You can see here it just has a rolled collar there. 
and I think it's really, really, really nice. So that's our new Broadway non-superwash fingering weight sample. And yeah. By the way, Stephanie is going to be one of our teachers at the Knitting at the Estate Retreat uh, for 2020. Um, I have not put it out on the newsletter simply because I forgot last week, but we did push back signups for Knitting at the Estate 2020. Signups were supposed to happen on uh, April 10th. However, due to COVID-19 and so many people being laid off or furloughed or out of work or funds are just tight. So we decided let's push it back a month. That's We can do that very easily. So signups will now be on May 8th, starting at 6 p.m. Central Time. They will be shop there'll be listings in the leading men fiber arts shop so leadingmenfiberarts.com the listings will all be the same price but you will choose either um, a double occupancy single occupancy or um, off-site the prices do range and this is all on knittingattheestate.com you can see all the information and the pricing and everything like that but what you're paying for in the initial payment is your um, $300 deposit and then from there, I will send a um, sign-up form where you'll give us all your information. And you can choose from there to either do the payment plan or you can just pay the remaining balance off and I will we'll send an invoice for that. So um, it will be a first come, first serve. Um, so there's no lottery this year. Um, just trying to make my life a little bit easier. And speaking of upcoming shows, we are canceled on everything pretty much. We're waiting on one show in May to cancel, honestly. Um, and we have a trunk show in May, but um, most of our June shows have canceled as well. So this weekend, we were supposed to be at the Fiber Event at Greencastle, Indiana. That's been canceled. So if you were going to attend that, maybe take a look at our online shop. Um, we have tons of goodies in there. Again, free online shipping. Everything that would have been on the show at the show is online. So you can, you're can you getting the same shopping experience just virtually. Um, and then the following weekend, we were supposed to be at the Minnesota Knitters Guild Yarn Over event, which is a one-day event, but that got canceled as well. So again, if you were going to shop there, perhaps check us out online. Again, you can't beat the free domestic shipping. This is not something that we see ourselves holding over past this crisis, but you never know. We'll see. All right, I'm going to go before I sneeze because I'm holding on to a sneeze like no other. And um, this is a quicker episode, but I really wanted to check in with you and I hope you all are doing well and I hope that you're sheltering in place, but at least getting out and getting a little bit of fresh air um, with some of the nicer weather, even though we've been getting snow some places up here. I saw some snow on people's cars this morning. We'll see. But anyway, until I see you again in two weeks, I hope you make something dramatic.